Hey guys, my name is Nate and I'm the Auto Outdoorsman and today I'm going to be helping you decide whether you should DIY or buy different bits of outdoor gear. Now with this, I'm both ways with it, completely honest, but this is kind of the process that I go through when I'm deciding whether it's a piece of gear is worth making or buying. Now, one of the first places you should start with this is do you want to make it or do you want to buy it? That is the end all be all question. If you're if you want to buy it, there's one specific item you want to buy, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you and don't let anyone stop you want to buy that specific item. And if you want to make that item and you definitely want to make that item, you still may want to go through this thought process, but Seriously, go try it, learn how to make it. It's definitely worth it. Now, if you're on the fence, this video will definitely help you out. Now, where to start? Well, best place to start is cost, if you're on the fence. How much does that item cost you? Now, let's say you want something like a first aid kit, but you want an in-depth one. Sometimes you can buy some cheap ones, but you can also buy some expensive ones. And if you want someone in, be someone in between, you may have to try and figure out the cost effectiveness of making your own. Also, sometimes some pieces of kit, the items are not cheap. I mean, look at uh, under quilts for hammocks. Most good ones are expensive. There's a lot of DIY videos out there that show that you can do one for maybe 30, 40 bucks. So you have to kind of play the weight of how much is it going to cost you to make it and how much and how much it's going to cost you to buy it. The next part is time. Now, how long would it take you to make this item? and how much time do you have available to you. I didn't get a chance to make a lot of things this summer because between work and a lot of social engagements and other obligations, I didn't have time to make things, so I had to rely more on buying. But if you have a lot of free time or have the time that you're willing to put aside for it, then go for it if you have the time. This winter I'm hoping to have a lot more time and thus I'm going to start a lot more of my DIY projects. I have some quicker ones that I can do until then. Um, for example, one of the things I'm never going to buy again is paracord bracelets because they take me 15 minutes to make while I'm watching TV. So why would I bother buying something like that which is seven bucks when for a fraction of the price, like a dollar to two dollars for me to make versus, you know, seven or eight bucks to buy and 15 minutes to make. Why would I go out and buy a power cord bracelet when I can just whip one together? Um, which then kind of brings me to the next point. Skills. You don't have to be a master craftsman, but with a lot of DIY projects, you have to ask yourself, do you have the skills to make it? Now, I'm not saying you have to be super practiced at it, but can you sew? Can you carve? Can you machine? Things like that. Can you work with power tools? Do you have those skills to work on it? And then the next point of that is how hard is it to learn those skills if you do not. How big of a learning curve is it? Now, I'm gonna go back to the paracord bracelet. At first, I wasn't, I didn't know the stitches. It took, the learning curve was short for me. It's learning skill, uh, learning curves are different for everyone. It took me half an hour to learn the stitch for a basic paracord bracelet and I just, after that, I could whip them together pretty quickly. Um, so you have to figure 
is it easy to learn? Some other things is things like sewing, when I wanted to make this axe mask. Or if I wanted to make the uh, bag for my survival kit. Sewing, I had some basic things with it and I watched a couple videos, learned a couple more of the skills pretty easily and picked it up. I'm still not the best, but I can put it together. But that there are skill, there are projects that require no skills to make. Things like my homemade survival kit, that it was less about my skills as a craftsman and more of just my knowledge of what I needed in there and what I wanted in there. So yes, there are a lot of DIY projects that require no skill and no learning curve, but do require some prior knowledge. But sometimes that prior knowledge or prior information is not that hard to get. Now, with those ones that do require skills, there is going to be a wall that a lot of people are going to face. Tools. Do you have the tools to make what you want to make? Do you have, does your project require power tools? Some of my upcoming DIY projects require me to have specific tools because, or to at least do them easily. I currently don't own any power tools, uh, especially since I moved. Most of them were not, most of the power tools or tools I had at my disposal were not mine. So they didn't come with me over here. But I do have friends that do have power tools. I have friends who have their own personal workshops. And I can work with them to make those things. Uh, recently I was thinking on whether I wanted to build a, uh, build a uh, bookshelf from scratch or buy one or buy one of those IKEA packages. I didn't have the time to uh, have someone come over and give me a hand with it. I wanted to get this done as soon as possible for videos like this. I didn't have the tools to do it myself and I wasn't 100% of my skills as a woodworker to make a nice looking shelf. So I decided to buy one which was a, a kit and I made it. So I kind of found that happy medium spot. In the future, if I get the tools, will I make bookshelves myself? Most likely, I wouldn't mind doing that. Especially because there surprisingly is a learning curve with IKEA furniture. But that's beside the point. Now, the last part, but definitely not least, is resources. Do you have the resources to do this project? Do you have the materials you need to make it? How hard are they to acquire? Is it a quick trip to the uh, hardware store, ordering off of Amazon, or you have to have a contact in order to get it? Like, sometimes getting large things of leather, for me in this area, wouldn't be that easy because the closest Tandy leather is not very close. Um, it's on the other side of Boston from me. And there aren't that many dealers online that sell it cheap. But there are places I can find it, and I do, have, I do have plenty of people I know that I could network through to get good pieces of leather. Um, not only material resources, but resources of people. Do you have friends that can help you? Do you have friends that know what they're doing with it? To your friends who can teach you the skills that you need to do the, to do this project if you do not have them already yourself. Sometimes also, do you have the space to make it? A lot of people don't always keep that in, in consideration. Do you have that location that you can make it if it's a project that involves maybe some milling or woodworking? Or even say you want to make your own knife, do you have a forge or something, or a way of heating up that metal at your disposal. I personally do not, so I'm not going to, I'd love to make myself a knife, but at this moment I do not have the ability to. 
I would love to make my own axe head, but I don't have the resources to make that axe head. I don't have the anvil. I don't have, I do not have the forge. I do not have the stuff that I need to do home blacksmithing. So that is a type of project that would be shelved for me. Would I come back to it if I have the resources? Yes. But at the moment, that isn't in the books. So I look at smaller projects, things I can make, things I can sew, things I can, things that I can basically combine together. Uh, I have friends who have a lot of power tools that, and I can talk to them and work with them on those projects. And I will have those too. There's a lot of the DIY projects I have coming to this channel are not that heavy in machining. Um, and my goal with most of those is to be projects that are easy enough that anyone, even in an apartment, could do. Even just by going just to the hardware store, picking up parts there and bringing it home and need very, very little skills to get that done. Not all of them will be like that, most of them will. Now, if you're, if you've gone through all of this and you think maybe buying is more of your way, Buying does have its advantages. For one, the person you're buying it from, especially if you're getting handmade stuff, already has all of these. They do make it. They have, they can afford the costs and the time because it's their job. They def most times definitely have the skills. People like my buddy Malcolm over at the Hidden Woodsman, I buy, bags from him because I like his products and he does good work on it and he has the skills. He doesn't need to worry about that learning curve and he has the resources and tools to get that job done. And that's the same with stores. I mean, they can make these things cheaper because they buy things in bulk. They don't have to worry about the learning curve. They don't have to, if something messes up, they don't have to redo it and lose a lot from that. And in most cases, sometimes for the cost that it would cut, make you, it would cost you to make that piece between time and materials, be the same amount you'd buy it for. A lot of people forget that, that I do live, I am one of those people that live by the saying, time is money. And the best way to think about that is, think about how much you make for a living. Think about, say, hourly. Every hour is either that or a fraction of that. So let's say, let's say for example, that you decide that your, hour, your, your time is worth $15 an hour. Just a guesstimate, whichever, Whichever way you want to go, if you want to go lower or go higher, that's fine. But I'm going to say 15 minutes. Uh, every hour is $15. $15. Now, say the project takes you four hours to do, that's $60 right there. And possibly that may be worth it because that's actually not physical money that you're spending on that piece, but instead it's more of just you're putting your time into it. And I do think about that sometimes when I go into DIY projects. For example, I recently bought a underquilt and I saw a lot of DIY projects. I really did go through multiple different YouTube videos of just how to make one. And I saw some ones I really liked and wouldn't have cost me too much to do, but between the time it would have taken me to get the resources, the time it would have taken me to make it, and the end result, I would have ended up spending about the same amount as if I would have bought it. So I bought a uh, kind of a budget one um, for about the same amount that I would have spent on making it. So, you, you got to kind of take it as you will. Uh, I'm definitely not trying to sway you one way or the other. I really do think if you want to make something or if you can make something, 
go for it. It's, it always feels nice after I make something. I always feel confident. And I always look at that item and go, I made that with my own two hands. But at the same time, sometimes I think when I look at certain items, it's not worth it for me to make it because I don't have the time and I don't have the tools or the resources or the money for it. Sometimes making things like a survival kit, maybe it may be worth to buy because they have the resources and they can buy things in bulk. But at the same time, me buying one of these, as I've done pre in a previous video, wouldn't be as good as if I made it. And that is also sometimes the case. This is about, I want to say, it's about four times cheaper than my in-depth survival kit. So take that as you will. Um, and I hope this helps you decide whether you want to DIY or buy a piece of outdoor equipment. I'll be going into more in depth of smaller items in the future with these DIY and buy series. It's just I wanted to do a giant blanket one. Anyways, my name's Nate. I'm the Otter Outdoorsman. You get outside, have some fun. Remember? Have a good day. See you, everyone.